<laughs> yes, peeps, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And we're going to be giving you a preview of the Crosshair 8 Formula X570 ready for Ryzen 3000 PCI Express 4 all of the tick boxes that you wanted to hear. And I know that you're gonna be wondering, why is it just a preview? Well, the full NDA gets lifted on the 7th of July. And I can't talk to you about performance, CPU kind of stuff, or a couple of other little things until then. I'm not even allowed to show you a Navi graphics card at the moment. But what I can do is show you the boards that I've uh, got arriving. And I actually drove to get this one from Asus today so that I could bring you it a little bit earlier than some of the other guys that will be getting it in the UK. So, Crosshair 8 Formula. It's obviously gonna be one of the expensive boards because it is a Crosshair and not one of the Strix lower end boards. We do have stuff around the box that we can look at, and but essentially what I'm going to do is you are going to be able to click through to the OC3D website if you'd like to see the text, get some specifics on some bits and bobs with the information that we are allowed to show you. But what I will also do is I will zoom you in and you can have a look down and through the box and all of the stuff that's going on. Obviously you can pause at any moment as well. And then I'll, I'm gonna give you a full look around the board as well, very up close. I'm not gonna take any heat sinks or anything off yet though, because it would be too risky when you think about the fact that I actually still have to test all this stuff as well. Uh, but you can see that we're already talking about uh, Wi-Fi 6, 5G LAN. It's got an EK water block in it. There you go, look, you can actually see for third and second gen AMD Ryzen. X570 chipset. PCI Express 4. Multi-GPU support. USB plus like because there it is for the first time you can see usb 3.1 gen 2 sorry 3.2 gen 2 oh it's all too much there's so much going on anyway that's the outside now don't forget you can click through to the oc3 website and i would love it if you haven't done already head over there but i know i'm a spoil spot but i've taken the uh, motherboard out so we can have a look so you get oh a new design coaster actually that's quite funky Anyway, coaster, you get aha, a cable mod voucher. Now, this can only be used once. So if you want some cable mod cables, be quick, have them cheaper on me. Uh, then we also get a uh, driver CD with a little badge going on inside as well. A little pamphlet saying welcome to the Republic and all of that kind of mumbo jumbo. Oh, we have some stickers. Oh, they folded them. Oh, they folded them. Anyway, so you get some stickers. These ones are actually handy for your cables. I wish I'd put these in my um, uh, server. Driver, a driver book. Uh, user guide, which is obviously your manual. And then underneath. Oh, it's actually quite light underneath. Oh, okay. So we've got an addressable RGB extension cable. We have a normal four pin RGB uh, uh, extension cable. We have your Wi Fi dongle and stuff going on in here so that's all nice we have the easy front panel connector thingamabobby do for what's it so you put your front panel and your us uh, sorry your leds and all that sort of stuff on this and then you can clip the whole thing on the board quickly uh, m.2 connectors and then we've got some um sata cables there's four normal sata cables and then there are four funky monkey soft braided ones sorry not four there are two uh one is uh straight one is 90 degrees <laughs> okay so we have an awful lot to get through with this board so we're going to do some uh slow pans i'm going to show you as much as i possibly can do get stuff zoomed in all of that sort of stuff so you've had a, a relatively good look uh, uh it from a distance straight away what i'm going to do is show you that the 8 pin on that's actually got shielding on it. Now, so you've got an 8 pin and a 4 pin power connector on the top left hand side. I'm not seeing any fan header or anything up there though. Uh, you get the first glimpse of the EK logo here and then you've, to be honest with you, this is, it's got the kind of design 
I hadn't really said this, but it's got the kind of design that's making me think Maximus and Rampage. So it's nice that they are actually trying to bring the design cues across to all the AMD stuff finally as well. Now, up in this top right-hand corner, you can see an awful lot of fan connectors. And I'm just reading along the top here, but you've got CPU optional, CPU fan, AIO pump, and then I can't see what the fourth one is uh, called because essentially I was looking just up here and I can't see where the fourth one's AIO pump if anyone can spot it then you've got an addressable RGB here normal RGB there then when we come down a little bit you can see that we've got a start and a reset button we've also got a couple of clips up and we slowly go down 24 pin VGA boost, oh hello, oh VGA, ah I see, VGA boot, oh so these are your um, uh, startup LEDs so you know what stage is going on through the BIOS, it's nice that they're a bit further spaced out as well, I do like that, then you've got USB uh, 3.2 Gen 2 header here, all nicely nice, lovely lovely, then we've got another chassis fan there, so I'm going to assume that this one up here is probably chassis, chassis fan one. And then we've got chassis fan two. We've got uh, another USB three uh, horizontal, which is nice. Then we've got uh, eight, actually, SATAs. Down in the bottom right-hand corner, we've jumped. Yes, I know, we have another fan there. You can see it's got a water pump header on it as well. This is kind of your water cooling zone as well. So this is so that you can see your water pump RPM. So you can plug that into that. Then you've got a flow water flow in and out temperature sensor. They're very handy for those of you out there that are still very heavily into adding all your sensors and stuff for your water cooling. That's obviously really good because then that information can then be um, inputted into the OS, which makes monitoring all that sort of stuff much easier. Then if I get this to sit just on the edge of the stand that I've got, you can see you've got your front panel header here, another USB 3 here. There are two that's USB 3.2 Gen 1, that one. This is another temperature header. You've obviously got the BIOS battery here, which is ever so slightly uh, covered up by the heat sink. But I'm hoping, yeah, you can still get that in and out without having to pull the heat sink off. So that's a really nice touch. Maybe not something that will get picked up by other people. Then you've got two USB 2s. You've got the node header. Asus are going to be, that's a proprietary header for Asus. Slow mode switch here, this is actually quite handy for uh, big overclockers. Uh, then you have RGB addressable and normal. You've then got a retry button and a safe boot button. A uh, safe boot, you can save um, some settings in the BIOS and then if you hit that button, it will boot to that no matter what other settings that you've got in there. The retry button, if you're wanging an overclock real hard, sometimes if it doesn't post the first time and actually boot into the OS, it can cause those annoying Windows errors. Whereas that retry button, kind of, it, it's like a reset without those issues. Then when we come along a little bit more, you can see we've got another header there. We get to the Supreme FX end of the um, board. When we come out here, now, I can already see that this is going to be an easy cover to pull off for M.2, so I'm just going to go and do that quickly because the rest of it I don't think I'm going to be able to. There are here, while I'm looking at it though, vents for the uh, chipset. Now, a lot of people are moaning about fans on chipsets and stuff. We haven't had a chance to test yet, but I'm going to assume that's down to the fact that we've got a lot more throughput because of PCR Express 4. And there is a lot more components on the boards now, making the boards more expensive. And that's just the stuff that you have to use to get PCR Express 4 working. It's just part and part of it. So boards are going to be more expensive across the board because of it. But we'll have a look to see what's underneath the M.2. OK, so with it removed, you can see that we've got a shorter 80 here. And this is an 80 mil long, sort of like a normal M.2 length. But this is the longer 110 millimeter length. So you've got two M.2s on this. 
I can't see any screws to be able to take any others off to get a third on it or anything like that. But, you know, it's, there's no uh, extra port up the side either for any thirds. I know some of the other boards are running three, but maybe they've done it because they wouldn't have been able to have got it in there aesthetically very nicely. What we can do as well is you can see up here the EK side of things, but I did want to draw attention to the massive, massive power segment around the outside of the CPU. Um, I do need to go into the nitty gritty. I haven't had any, I think, official from Asus about this. I've literally, I know what's on the box. We have had no extra reviewers guides to tell us about cap specifics. Uh, there's um, the uh, choke specifics. I'm gonna have a rough guess at the fact that I think that this is going to be a similar kind of thing to the um, uh, Zenith Extreme Alpha, which they didn't use doublers and it was uh, hardwired um, to give more that way. So if, if you're interested, kind of go and give that a look to see the way that they, they did the electronics or the power delivery, because they've stopped calling them VRMs now. It's more of a power phase is what they're calling it. Uh, and you have, um, uh, it's a very clever way of doing it where you have uh, two chokes on it and then two caps and I'm not sure whether yeah it's definitely going to be something that I'm going to have to take up with Asus more uh, because I don't want to start saying stuff and then it be wrong so I'd rather save it for the main review then when we look around the back of the board we have BIOS clear and then um, a BIOS flashback button there's your BIOS flashback button there You've got a selection of USBs down the back because obviously now we're running a USB 3.2 Gen 2 as well, but we've got the Wi-Fi 6 on here. That's something new. There's not many phones out there that really support Wi-Fi 6, but there are a load of Asus routers that support Wi-Fi 6 if you're interested. The ROG Rapture uh, AX11000 and the AX88U, which is the AX6000, both support um, Wi-Fi 6. If you're interested in upgrading your home Wi-Fi, you can go and do those as well. The reason why I know that is I actually have the two uh, uh, routers behind me. Further down, you get a five gig ethernet port and then a normal gigabit ethernet port. And you've also got the um, uh, type C USB there as well. With the 5G Ethernet, that's not going to magically make your Ethernet uh, or your internet any faster, but if you've got supporting components in your network, like your router or a faster switch connected to other PCs that are going to need support in hardware as well, you can uh, massively speed up data transfers from uh, multiple PCs to things like NAS drives or home servers or even other people using Tinternet uh, or networking on your own home network. Uh, it's definitely good that we are starting to see upgrades with the 5G and the 2.5G that's supported on the um, Hero. But I do need to stress that you do need to have everything else that supports it as well. So if you were to plug this into a switch that was only one gigabit, it would only run at one gigabit. So, you know, just kind of some specifics there for you. And then you can see that we also have the uh, audio down the bottom uh, and there you can see the gold plated connectors in the middle. And when you power the board up, they actually light up as well. So to finish in a very red room, yes, agreed. Maybe I should turn them off. Anyway, uh, we have, I can power the board up. Now it's not properly powered. It's literally being powered by a couple of cables off of a USB extension. Uh, or a USB power before AMD start going nuts. You can clearly see there is no CPU in the socket at all. So I'm not breaking NDA, I hope. Anyway, top right hand corner, you can see, and it is just in a um, kind of a demo mode. It's just cycling colors, but the power and the reset in the top right hand corner, you can set the colors of that now. It's not just limited to white. When we come across to the IO around the back. You can see it's got kind of like a nice, modern -y kind of feel cut out on the back that is behind that mirror though so if you don't like the lights you don't have to see it and you can just see the mirrored effect so it's like a two-way mirror and i think that's kind of cool you've got an oled panel at the back you can have that display things like cpu temperature you can have it display gpu temperature there's several of the animations that you can see with the rog logo that you can set it to if you want you can even set your own custom one uh, I'm kind of hoping that the CPU temperature is actually going to be an accurate CPU temperature rather than a socket temp like it has been in the past, but that's going to all come down to their software devs. 
And then uh, around the PCR Express area, you can see there's another layer. Now that just did just look like a mirror to us before, but like I've said, uh, you, you enable the LEDs and then it gives you another kind of level to the board. You can also see that there is a little bit of light bleed around the fan as well. And it's also because it's slightly darker, you can see the fan in there. I'm not going to know if that's noisy or whether the chipset actually does get hot or anything until I am allowed to talk to you about performance. I would assume though that there will be an override for that in the BIOS should it not be needed in nine times out of ten. If it ever gets insanely hot to the point that it might uh, overheat, the fan normally will kick in uh, even if it has been disabled. So, you know, these are all just kind of guesstimates at the moment, but that's the best I can kind of go with. So, for now at least, this has been the tiniest one with the first of my uh, previews from Asus, and that is the ROG Crosshair 8 formula. Please don't forget, I do have the X570 Gaming Strix as well, the Crosshair 8 Hero. I also have the Prime X570 Pro and the Tough FX570 Plus. All of these previews are going to be up on the channel within the next day or two. Um, obviously, I don't know when you're watching this, but there's a lot more information. If you're watching this after the 7th of July, there will be full reviews live on the channel and on the website as well. Please click through to the website if you'd like any more information. Don't forget, if you are interested in more videos, hit the subscribe button, but also hit the bell, because if you don't hit the bell nine times out of ten, YouTube isn't going to be polite and tell you about the fact that there's any videos live at all. Uh, and that goes for all you regulars as well. Hit that bell now if you want to be kept up to date so that you don't miss any of the content because there is going to be a lot more. And yes, that is Orca. That's where she lives now. Anyway, this has been Tiny Tom Logan with the first of many. I need more coffee or maybe not.